First things first, having a large cast in a show is not inherently a bad thing. When we discuss the issues with Ruby's cast bloat, I feel like some people misconstrued the issue into being that a large cast is bad in general. That's not always the case though. In fact, tons of great stories involve casts as big or even bigger than Ruby's. Ruby has a main cast of 8 to 11-ish members, depending on what volume you're watching, which is similar to the likes of Sailor Moon, whose cast reached is 9 to 12-ish characters. And not just the main characters, but having large supporting casts too, like Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, Dragon Ball Z, One Piece, Steven Universe, hell, even Lord of the Rings has a ton of characters. So it's not that having many characters in your story is bad. In fact, with stories like these, where our main cast is traveling around to many locations within the world, fleshing out a lot of characters helps to build out that world even more, help making that world feel more lived in and real. The reason we talk about cast bloat being an issue with Ruby is how the story actually uses its large ensemble. I've decided to break it down into four key elements. Number one, what's the point of having all these characters if they don't ever get to interact with each other? Part of the fun with a large cast is seeing our heroes interacting with the various interesting people we get introduced to. However, with Ruby, characters tend to just stick to the same old pairings with each other. Ren and Nora have talked to each other a thousand thousand times. But how often did Ren ever talk to Pira? How many conversations has Nora had with Yang? Blake and Yang are always together, but when has Blake talked to Oscar or Jean? Not even looking at our main cast of characters, did Ruby ever talk to Winter? Has Weiss and Sun ever had a chat? Did Crow ever say anything to Penny? I truly think the issue with Ruby's large cast wouldn't be considered nearly as big of an issue if the characters talked to each other more. Clearly, the writers already struggle with just having two characters in the main cast talk to each other. Like, I can count the conversations Ruby and Blake have had on one hand. And they're on the same team! They've been together since the very beginning of the show, and they barely talk. It becomes this thing of, why introduce more and more characters when we haven't even gotten meaningful relationships and development between the characters we already have? It makes the story feel like a group of mild acquaintances reluctantly wandering the world together. What's worse is that actually really important interactions ended up being entirely missed out on that would have really greatly improved the characters and the story. Imagine if Penny and Pyrrha had actually known each other before Pyrrha accidentally ripped her in half. It would change from, oh no, I've killed a girl who's my crush's friend's friend, to, I've killed one of my friends. That hits a bit different, doesn't it? Adam never interacted with Weiss. Her heated feelings about the White Fang seemed really important back in Volume 1. The Schnee Company is considered a huge force against Faunus rights and workers. Adam is literally branded with her family's name, permanently burned onto his face. But he died without Weiss ever getting to see that, without Weiss ever getting to acknowledge this dark side of the family's company. All that interesting character growth and potential went down the drain along with Adam's body. Watts, one of the main villains for at least five years, died with no one ever interacting with him. <laughs> Not any of them, none of the main heroes, a main antagonist lived and died without the heroes ever knowing anything about him. There was a whole person running around, teamed up with Cinder, was the technician behind the virus that led to the destruction of Beacon, and they never faced him. I don't even think they knew his name. Why introduce all these characters? Characters that have really interesting elements to them just to ignore those interesting elements. It makes the characters on the whole feel irrelevant. Watts could have been gone entirely. Have like Mercury or whatever be the smart techie one who invented the virus. The end. Nothing's different. Watts as a character in his entirety has no meaningful impact on the development of the characters. If you can replace a character with literally any other character and change nothing about your story progression or your main character's development, then you have a waste of a character. Number two, the no-name side characters are the ones doing all the important things. One of 
Ruby's biggest flaws is the fact that the main cast famously do next to nothing important for the plot. Sometimes it literally feels like I'm watching a weird parody story where we're following the events of the side characters while the real heroes are doing the important stuff in the background. Like that one episode of My Little Pony? You know the one. <laughs> as early as volume three, the old folks gather behind closed doors to discuss the delicate balance of the maiden's defenses and Salem's plans to interfere. We watch as Cinder schemes with her lackeys as she intricately pieces together the events for the fall of Beacon. We see Pyrrha being presented with a glimpse into this unknown secret gathering. The real plot, the real meaning of the story is being offered to her. She gets to explore this plot point. Oh. Team Ruby? They're playing video games and not knowing literally anything important for the main plot. Whoopee! A story can have a lot of side characters or even characters who play important roles other than the main protagonists. But the main protagonists have that title for a reason. They're supposed to be the main ones we follow for this story. Frodo isn't the main protagonist because of no reason. He's the one we have a story about because he's the one doing doing the thing in the story. <laughs> Imagine if, instead, after walking up all the way to the foot of Mount Doom, Aomer suddenly came up out of nowhere and took the ring the final ten feet. Yeah, I know how that would feel, because I watched Team Ruby get all the way to the end before Team Coffee showed up and finished the story instead. Imagine if, instead of Steven finding out about the gem war and gem homeworld, Lars was learning about all of that. Steven's in the show still, he's still propped up as the important one, but while Lars is learning about super important elements from the plot proper, we cut to Steven sitting around playing video games and being completely unaware of what the show is about. When Maidens were first introduced, I really didn't want Team Ruby to become the Maidens. None of them. Because it felt very cliché. Now? I'd kill to see one of these four girls get glowing eyes. Hell, include Nora and Emerald into that lineup too. Literally Really, anyone in the main cast should be a maiden because the plot only cares about the maidens. Team Ruby are upstairs doing grunt work while the real main characters battle over the Haven Vault downstairs. You know, Raven and Vernal clearly are real main characters. Team Ruby fiddle around doing more grunt work while the real main characters fight off Cinder and try to get the powers from Freya. You know, Winter and Penny clearly are real main characters. And it's not just the big important plot things. It feels like every meaningful moment in Ruby gets handed off to someone other than the four main Ruby girls. So in turn, I, as an audience member, have become resentful of these side characters, staring bitterly at my screen as Robin and the Happy Huntresses and Harriet and the Aesops eat away screen time, watching Harriet cry over the death of Clover and get a meaningful moment to express how hurt she feels over losing him, as I wish Crow could have gotten this moment instead. As I wish Ruby could have properly gotten to have this moment over Penny's death. No, I don't care about Vine sacrificing himself to save an empty city. I care about Yang falling off of the edge of the world. You know, the character we've been with since the start of the show ten years ago? Not this loser nobody who's had five lines of dialogue? If the side characters aren't stealing the important plot beats away from the main cast, then they're stealing away precious screen time and animation effort from them instead. And maybe it's because the writers just don't like their characters coming up with these new, interesting characters instead that they want to play with. Like a shiny new doll instead of their old, boring ones that they're used to. Well, guess what? If your characters ever interacted with each other a lot more, I bet they wouldn't feel so boring. Number three character efficiency. I mentioned all those shows that have large casts, and at a glance you might not think about the reason behind why the cast ended up that big to begin with. Now it could be that the storytellers wanted a shiny new doll, like I was saying. Jazz up the story with a fun new design, introduce a nifty new ability or something. But the real key reason a character will need to be introduced to a story is because they serve a purpose no other character serves. They can give information no other character could originally 
originally give. They can solve a problem or have a key skill that the other characters couldn't handle. Even something like having a personality that the others might have needed in their team to better set the mood for the show. Characters serve a purpose. And in Ruby, too often characters feel unnecessarily repetitive. And I think a key issue of this started with the team structure. In the show, teams are made of four people, which means every time one character gets introduced, that implies there's three other characters that need to go along with them. And unfortunately, RT was very uncreative when constructing their characters and their teams. Early volume stuff. They need a bully character for the John arc, so they made Cardin. Makes sense. He's named after the Cardinal of Winchester, which is a very clever reference to Joan of Arc, which is John's inspiration. It makes sense. It's all cool. Hunky dory. But now Cardin needs a team. So what do they do? They just make three carbon copies of Cardin. They're not clever references, they're just also birds because get it, Cardinal, get it? <laughs> they have no other defining personality traits. By all means, it's just the same character three more times. Here's Sun. We wanted a cool guy character. So then we meet his team and it's just a whole team of cool guy characters. Wasn't one of the fun elements about having a team of four the idea that it's four distinct personalities learning teamwork? This notion of making a new character for the story, then making the rest of their team the same exact archetype, feels like a waste of potential. And in the long run, it's really unfortunately bloated the cast in a very boring way. Volume 1. They wanted their main heroes and our main heroes as best friends. Then along with the rest of the volume, they needed a bully character, a cool guy character, a shy bullied girl, and Penny. Well, that right there is your team of four. I know, I know. Technically, Sun and Penny come from different schools and Velvet's a year older. Let's just ignore that for right now. Rather than look at what they wanted to introduce and consider the efficiency of making these characters one team, they instead chose a much more boring option and gave them teammates who all have either the same personality as each other or almost no personality. And don't you tell me that this lineup of characters wouldn't be interesting to see as a team. We got a fun loving blonde with super sane inspired strength, often being the team's pick-me-up and also an emotional backbone when things get serious. We got someone who comes from a life of privilege who needs to overcome their prejudices after being teamed up with a faunus. We have a faunus who's faced discrimination and struggles to find her own strength and courage, and a leader with unusual abilities who most people might not think was the best choice for the position, but she's earnest and kind and caring about those around her. Does that not sound interesting? Well, I hope so, because I was literally just describing Team Ruby. Come on, there's so many interesting parallels here. <laughs> and what do we lose by cutting out the rest of their teams? We lose out on a cool design. None of them have enough personality to warrant losing out on their actual characters. This isn't just limited to the Beacon Days either. Look at the Aesops. Five whole nobodies get thrown at us suddenly in volume seven. The Atlas Elite, right? We got the one who dies, the rude one, boring number one and boring number two, and then that one Faunus character. Okay. Great, I don't care about any of these people. Jazz them up and shove them into the center stage as much as you like. It's been seven years of this show's runtime. I don't have it in me to care about these barely explored side nobodies out of nowhere. But you know who I would have cared about? Ciel. We introduced Ciel in Volume 3. People immediately loved her. She was already interesting with her cute design and fun personality gimmick. Replace Harriet with Ciel. But don't stop there. Winter and Penny are also already Ironwood's main counsel. Take the one that's going to die and replace him with Penny, and then take one of the boring ones and replace them with Winter. And while we're here, screw it. Just replace the last of them with Flint and Neon. Another couple of characters from Atlas introduced in Volume 3 that people fell in love love with. RT knew how much people liked Team Funky because they bothered bringing them back into the story out of nowhere in Volume 7 already, and also introduced their two other lame-o teammates. Forget about that, just make this your Aesops. Ruby so often introduces interesting characters into the show, then decides to just throw them away to make new characters instead. You've already gone through the trouble of designing a cool character. Use them. God, could you imagine if Sun, Penny, Velvet, and Cardin fought Team Indigo in the tournament. Because, like, we didn't need to see Team Sun's fight. That was kind of pointless. But, but then if we would have seen this one, it would have helped set up Penny because she makes it into the finale. Oh, man. 
Oh, it would have been cool. Oh, I want this team. It would have been neat. <laughs> Number four. Hey, we have a gigantic army of heroes now. I don't think the villains stand a chance. A side effect of having a really big cast is that suddenly you need to give the villains a large force in order to justify the big cast, not instantly stomping everybody. Here's our nine million superheroes. Oh, but it's a good thing Thanos arbitrarily has millions of alien Goombas. <laughs> because otherwise, they'd just be curb stomping his ass in a heartbeat. Right? Endless hordes of orcs and urukai, an army of zombie monsters. Stories with large casts often end with the cast facing a war of monsters to fill out the battle because there's so many characters, they all need to do something so it's not easily won in the end. Here's the problem Ruby's been doing this since volume two. The heroes have plowed through tons and tons and tons of Grimm, millions upon billions of Grimm, no matter how much bigger or badder the grim look, the heroes have all handled it with ease over and over and over again. It's boring now. Killing monsters in droves is something our heroes handled with ease before they finished school. Now, as adults, with at least one maiden on their side, Ruby's silver eye power is getting stronger and stronger, yeah, the grim stand no chance. And what's worse is the fact that while the hero side of the story has gotten bigger and bigger and bigger every passing year, the villains' ranks have gotten smaller and more pathetic. We've lost Watts, Hazel, Adam, Neo, Torchwick, Emerald's a good guy now. All that's left with the villains are Salem, Cinder, Tyrion, and Mercury. That's literally it. When I did my fanfiction pre-write for volume nine, I was like, ah, oh, I'll bring back all of the villains over the years to better embolden the villains' faction. And then I realized that other than Junior and the Malachi twins, there are no other villains. What, Salem's going to drag Little Miss into the battle? I don't think so. <laughs> Is Salem going to hunt down those high school bullies and recruit them into her team? Even if we cut out all of the side characters and just looked at our heroes, Team Ruby and Team Juniper, we'll even leave out Crow and Winter and everyone else like that, just Ruby and Juniper, they could still easily handle Cinder, Tyrion, and Mercury, right? Cinder has become notorious for constantly losing every battle she's been in since volume five. Ruby has already bested Tyrion once, and Yang has beaten Mercury once. Even with Salem's healing abilities, I really don't think beating her would be much of an issue with these eight working together. And also clearly, punching her a lot until she stops moving isn't gonna be how they solve the problems anyway with Salem. So we don't need to worry about them fighting her, it's just these three and they could easily beat these three. Battles have no stakes anymore. Oh, who's died? Penny, Clover, and Vine? Okay, three down. There's still another 20 plus characters waiting in the wings. When you introduce a fun new toy to play with, you also have to balance out the opposing side of the toys. No one's changed sides to be with Salem. Salem hasn't gained any new followers. The villain's forces have stagnated and been killed off. The more and more they bloat their cast, the less seriously I take the villains. I guess a solution they could have would be to suddenly introduce a whole bunch of characters who do team up with Salem. Oh yeah, that's a great idea. Our main villains being filled out with random people who are suddenly introduced 10 years into the show's runtime. With no time for character development, they're only here to pose a threat. Great, just really great storytelling right there. I used to get really excited when they were introducing new characters into the show, especially in the early volumes. The world was so vast and fun, I just craved seeing more of what it had to offer. Seeing cool new weapons and semblances and designs, meet characters from different parts of the world. But as time has gone on, that thrill has gone away and turned into annoyance. Yeah, a cool new weapon or semblance is neat, but I'd still rather get to see our real characters using theirs instead. I watch as Team Ruby fade further and further into the background as the many other, vastly less interesting characters take center stage. Team Ruby struggled to maintain their loose grasp of plot relevance as other characters who were not on screen for two and a half volumes get propped up instead. Interesting characters get quietly forgotten as the writers insist on crapping out half-baked new ones now. Ruby doesn't have a problem with cast bloat. Ruby has a problem with its characters in general. I cooked you some bacon for a trail snack. I ate it already. What? Isn't it stunning? 
Just a big, dumb pond. This morning, I saw a YouTube clip of a little puppy riding a motorcycle. Well, first of all, send me a link to that video. Do you have any history of mental illness in your family? I have an uncle who does yoga. Are you insane? He was a million-year-old racist. He said he liked ethnic girls, Tom. Actually, the dress that Julia Roberts wore is a prostitute in Pretty Woman. I know. I look really good at it. I know when your birthday is. So does Baskin Robbins. I know that you secretly love artichokes. Give your voice down, woman. Welcome to City Hall, Cupcake. How many of you are in here? Allergies. Cowardice and weak-willed men. And hazelnuts. Shout out to my $10 patrons. You're all amazing. Nako, Cool Duck, Andrew, Valhalla Knight, Chamomile, G Extreme, Classy Critic, Noah Perkins, Sunny Shy, Jake, Amber, Hype Man, Zero to Hero, Isaiah, Scaring Crows, Not All That Evil, Messiah Complex, Jacob, Virus, Ben's Sketchbook, The Watcher, Omega Fighter, Trash, Wild Pilot, Josh, Swift Cannon, The Infinity Effect, and Gino. So yeah, what do you think about all this? What do you think about the team of Penny, Velvet, Sun, and Cardin? I had this idea like a year ago and I, I fell in love. I, that seems like such a fun team combo. I, it seems like what a, what a wacky combination. Also, what do you think about the Aesop's change up? I think putting CL on the Aesop's especially would have made so much more sense, you know? What, what do you think about anything I said? I talked a lot about this video, a lot about the cast and stuff. Do you agree or disagree with anything I have to say? I would love to see your comments down below, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.